We'll call to order the Douglasville City Council Legislative Work Session for tonight, which is Thursday, March the 28th, 2024. Our invocation will be done by the Reverend Orlando Evans, Senior Pastor of the Bright Star United Methodist Church. Good evening. And uh, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance after the invocation, and it will be led by the Mayor Pro Tem, City Council Member Terry Miller. Please stand for the invocation. Greetings, Mayor Robinson, Council, and guests. Let's draw inspiration from John chapter 12, verses 24 through 26, which tells us, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Spring is the optimal season for a seed to receive water, light, and warmth as it rests in the stillness of the ground. Until germination takes place, the seed may appear to have fallen to the ground in vain. Several of us may know how this feels. Perhaps we've labored in the past but failed to see the fruitfulness that we expected. Perhaps we lingered underground hoping that a light would pierce our resting place and invite us to sprout to new heights. To those of us who have been waiting in the dark, I offer a word of hope. Your season has changed, and God's Spirit has come to activate and resurrect what was previously seen as being end of life. Let us pray. Gracious God, through Jesus Christ, you modeled what it looks like for a seed to emerge with new life. By your Spirit, you are able to resurrect and renew that which appears to have been at the end of its story. Please activate the seeds that have been dormant in our lives and allow them to grow in a manner that glorifies you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mayor. Pro Tem for leading us in the pledge, and Pastor Evans, we appreciate the invocation. It's Holy Week, so you got your preach on. It was good, too. Monday, Thursday, and tomorrow being Good Friday, and we are off tomorrow. Uh, the city of Douglasville, it is a holiday, so uh, we will not be open on Friday. But I'd like to welcome you to the Douglasville City Council Legislative Work Session. My name is Rochelle Robinson. I'm mayor of the city of Douglasville. This is a work session where agenda items are presented for discussion only and no official action will be taken this evening. Official action will be taken on the items discussed tonight on next Monday, April 1st at 6 p.m. here in the council chambers. If the business you are here for is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time under the agenda item comments from citizens and delegates for you to discuss your business. Just a few protocol issues I'd like to go over with um, everyone, and then we will get into uh, the meeting. I ask that you please keep your comments and presentations on a professional level dealing with the facts that are important for this governing body to make our decisions. We will not accept comments that are considered by the chair to be of a personal attack on any individual or group of individuals. You will receive a warning from the chair, and if you deviate from this warning a uh, second time, will result in us discontinuing the conversation by turning your microphone off. Only one person speaking at a time. Please do not applaud or react to speakers. Speak from the audience, cheer, or carry on a conversation while you're at the podium. We ask that you would just address all of your concerns and comments to the committee chairperson. I remind you that we are only required to accept public comments during the required public hearings. And if you have any printed materials, please give those to the city clerk, Ms. Vicki Acker, to my right with the black sweater on, and she will make copies and disseminate that information to us. Um, if you have electronic devices, a cell phone or iPad or such, please put those in silent mode or turn those off until after the meeting so they will not be disruptive. Now this is how the council uh, meeting will go. We handle everything by agendas and the agenda item goes through the committee chairperson. The committee chairperson will read their agenda item, then that person representing that agenda item or applicant will make his or her presentation to us. Myself and council members will possibly ask questions to help clarify the issues so that we'll be able to uh, make a better decision on Monday. After that, the committee chairperson will ask for comments or statements from the audience if it's a public comment or public hearing. There is a maximum of 20 minutes for each person, uh, each side to comment, 20 minutes for those in favor of the item and 20 minutes for those that, are in, uh, that oppose the item in opposition. But each person has five minutes to speak, whether you um, support it or, or do not. 
Prior to coming to the podium, please give, uh, we have speaker cards outside. There are some blue cards. You should have filled those cards out. And once you come to the podium, we ask that you give those to our city clerk for the record, and then you can give us your name and address and address myself and council members. We'll be happy to hear whatever you uh, would like to talk about. Each person only has one opportunity to speak. This is not a debate or question and answer format. We are here to hear the information, deliberate, and make our decisions on next Monday. And please um, address all of your concerns to the chairperson. I believe that's it. Again, if you have printed materials, you can give them to us. And at the end of the meeting, under comments from citizens and delegates, you're welcome to discuss any business that is germane to the city of Douglasville. So now we will move on with the agenda uh, that is printed. Either you can pick a paper agenda out, up outside on the desk and or you can follow us on the screen. So now we'll go to the committees. So we've gone through our invocation, our pledge, those announcements, and we're at our first committee uh, that has business and is item number five, Economic Development Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Mayor Pro Tem, uh, City Council Member Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have one item under the Economic Development Committee tonight. Yes, sir. And it's to authorize the mayor <clears throat> to sign a letter of support to Senator Raphael Warnock for funding for goodwill of North Georgia to expand workforce development training in Douglasville. Mm -hmm. Um, Ms. Marcia Hampton will have our, okay, our city discussion manager. regarding. Good evening, um, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, and, and I just want to apologize. I'll probably have to make a correction for Monday. This should be a letter to both uh, Senator Warnock and um, Ossoff. Yes. So we will make that correction before Monday. But your Douglas County Chamber of Commerce has requested uh, letters of support um, for the goodwill of North Georgia. Um, we have uh, been interested in for some time, the Chamber of Commerce has for a Goodwill Career Center. Um, recently, uh, Karen Callen, your assistant city manager, traveled with the Chamber of Commerce to take a look at a similar facility. Um, we've uh, looked at several facilities over the years, and both um, senators have agreed to look at funding, particularly for Douglas County, um, for this type of facility. So um, this is what this um, authorizes for the mayor to sign both of those letters, but we will make corrections um, to that item before Monday. Okay, thank you, Madam City Manager. Uh, any questions or comments from council or Madam Mayor? Uh, there was a very good write-up in, in today's paper on this uh, issue, actually. Uh, so if anybody has a direct attention to the Sentinel's paper today, um, I see very little that's not good coming out of this. So if there's no, no objection, I'd like to place this on the consent agenda for Monday. Yes, sir. So, uh, so ordered. Uh, that's all we have under the Economic Development Committee at this time, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. And I was going to say, Mr. Keith Parker, who is um, the CEO of the Goodwill of North Georgia, came to the chamber probably a month ago to do a presentation. And so it seemed that it was very well received in the community as well to have a Goodwill um, mm -hmm. Center here for workforce. So we'll move on to the next committee, which is Finance Committee, chaired by Council Member Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business tonight, surprisingly enough, in finance. So. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on then to item number seven, Housing and Community Affairs Committee, chaired by Council Member Howard Estes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The Housing and Community Affairs Committee has no business this evening. Thank you, sir. We'll move on then to Legislative and Intergovernmental Committee, chaired by Council Member Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have a couple items under the Legislative and Intergovernmental Committee at this yes, time. Mm -hmm. First is to adopt an ordinance to amend Section 6.30 of the Charter for the City of Douglasville to revise provisions for authorizing contracts. Our Councilor, Miranda Jordan, will fill us in on this. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Good evening. This was adopted at the last round of council meetings on March 18th, and due to the requirements under state law for an amendment to our charter that has, has to be adopted at two meetings consecutive to one another, this was the change to take the actual amount of the signing authority of the city manager out of the charter and to make it replaced with language where the amount is set by ordinance instead. It makes it a little easier to make those adjustments in the future because we only have to make one amendment to the ordinance. Do, you said you took it out. Does that mean we have to do this, we have to approve the first item one more time again? Or is That's right, it's, the, it's just a repeat of the same approval. So we'll, so we'll be coming, we'll, in the next 
round of meetings, we'll be doing item A one more time. That's right. On, on Monday, then, well, no, on Monday, it was already adopted in March. Well, I thought you said you had to make a change to it to take the, the amount out of that amendment. That was the that that part was the same as what was done at the March 18th okay, so meeting. Our, so it had already um, been taken out the, on the first time, first go around. That's Just right. Sure that's that. right. Okay. Sorry for the confusion on that. Thank you. Any comments or questions from council? I think this um, this is round two on this one, so I think there shouldn't be presumably no uh, questions. So, uh, as long as there are consensus, I'd like to place that item onto the consent consent agenda for Monday. Okay. Looks okay. And uh, our next item is the amend section 2-154 of the Code of, the Ordin Code of Ordinances for the City of Douglasville to authorize the city manager to execute contracts on behalf of the city where the value of the city's obligation does not exceed $100,000 in zero cents. Ms. Jordan, that's the second half of that. Yes, thank you. So this would set that amount mm -hmm. um, and also increase it from the current amount for the purposes of allowing the city manager to take some of that burden off of city council members for items that are just smaller in, in value, relatively speaking. And um, that would in turn create a smaller agenda for those routine purchases and approvals. And refresh my memory, is this the second time we were doing this one now too as well? This one only has to be done once because it's just a local ordinance change and not a charter change. Got it, thank you. Questions or comments from Madam Mayor Council? Councilman Watts. What was the, uh, the amount before? The amount before, it has been 50000 okay. It actually, there, there was not an update to the charter amount. So we're, we're kind of doing two things at one time here. We're correcting the charter provision to be in line with what is currently approved, but we're also making that adjustment up in the amount as well. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Councilman Hudson. Yes, thank you. I just had a quick uh, question. I just wanted to confirm. We decided to increase it also because to just account for the rising cost in the, the average cost and things that we're having to approve for that 50,000 mark. We just felt like based on kind of the economy and the economic mm -hmm. conditions, is that is that correct? I that is correct, and a lot of, uh, Ms. Hampton can address that a little bit, but the, um, a lot of the contracts are right over that 50,000 thresh thresh, um, threshold, so it kind of, it might be 51,000, and it's coming before council. If you had to make an emergency purchase, for instance, for three police vehicles, Major, how much would that cost? Equipped? Yes. <laughs> Probably 150,000. Correct, 150000 So, I mean, we've had times where we've had to purchase too quick. There's a vehicle there. The money is there if you have to do something. And that's just an example. We have a lot of routine purchases that cost above $50,000. Um, some of our equipment for some of our facilities having to replace roofs, um, those sorts of things. Um, anything that I sign that you all don't see, they are routine. Um, they're not things that, um, or they've already been adopted um, in some way, shape, or form as a part of the budget. If it's not part of the budget, I don't sign anything that hasn't been adopted by you in the budget in the beginning. Uh, the other is by doing so, um, by changing the language to the charter, you all won't have to do a charter change. If you feel as though this is too much, too much, you can always adopt an ordinance to lower it back down uh, for some reason. Unfortunately, I haven't seen prices go down in the 20 years I've been here, but yes. Thank you, city manager. Yes, I appreciate that clarification. I just want to make sure the public was aware of what our reason for also changing it was. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Hudson, any other questions or comments? Um, seeing none, I, there's no objection. I'd like to place this on the consent object, uh, agenda on Monday as well. Uh, city manager, I, we trust you won't go crazy on us, so. <laughs> I need my job. I have three children. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all we have under the Legislative Intergovernmental Committee at this time. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. We'll move on then to Personnel and Organization Committee, chaired by Councilmember Howard Estes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business for the Personnel and Organization Committee tonight. Thank you so much, Councilman Estes. We'll move on to Planning and Development Committee. We do have business there, and it is chaired by Councilmember Nicole Miller. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am, we do have a couple of items this evening. And the first item is to consider a request for a revised final plat approval for Timber Ridge subdivision to correct the address of lot 238 on 83.30 acres at zero Presley Mill Road in Landlot 54, District 1, Section 5, Parcel ID 00540150023. Application by Lenore Holmes of Georgia, care of Chris Stanford, and we've got our very own Mr. James Gordon down here to talk to us about what we're doing here this evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm James Good Gordon evening. from Engineering, 6695 Church Street. We, this is simply a typographical error. error. This is just a typo. The final lot, lot 238, was given the same address of a lot just two doors down. Mm -hmm. So we have to make the correction so that they can start building on that particular lot. Thank you so much for that explanation. I know we'd spoke about that earlier. Uh, Council, did you guys have questions about what Mr. Gordon is telling us here? Mm -hmm. No? Okay, with that being said, um, can we place this on the consent agenda? You guys good with that? Perfect. Looks like a yes. Thank you all so much. Moving along. Okay. Um, our next item here is to consider a request for a revised final plat approval for mm -hmm. Silverman Phase 4 to split the existing three tracks into four tracks mm -hmm. on 57.99 acres at 7600 Wood Road in Landlot 162, District 2, Section 5, Parcel ID. 0162025001 application by SL Douglas Place to LLC uh, care of Stephen Moon and we do have our Mr. Gordon down here to talk to us about this one as well. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. This plat what is what is being done here is that they have a tract that was already in place and it was a pretty large track and a warehouse has already been built mm -hmm. on Bright Star Connector and that particular piece of land the warehouse did not take up all of the land so there was a little wing that was actually going over and actually merged over on to Highway 5. The developer has decided to remove that section that touches Highway 5. And that's all this does. All the other tracks, even though it's, it mentions four tracks, all the other tracks are not being affected. It's only this one that sits with the warehouse. Correct. Thank you. Coach, you got a question? Well, I was just going to point out, because uh, it took me a while to figure out, maybe y'all uh, figured it out a lot quicker, but if you look at pages 17, 18, and 19, you mm -hmm. know, back to back to back, you get a good look at what um, Mr. Gordon has right. brought forward. You know, Silverman, that Silverman right. project. That we, yeah, it's mm -hmm. that piece of land that's kind of across the street from the new um, Douglas County, the graduation, graduating facility which next to the apartment mm -hmm. that backs up to the Bright Star Connector, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And they're just wanting to remove this parcel. Is it track four, the 8.41 acres? Is that the track we're refer referencing? Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. The eight acres. That's the only new track. Got it. Mm -hmm. Did y'all have any more questions about this item? No. Are you guys comfortable with putting this on the consent agenda? Wonderful. Looks Thank like y'all yes. so much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Gordon. You. And then our next item is to consider a request for exemption plat approval for the purpose of combining 0 0.04 acres at 6130 Presley Mill Road, Suite B, and Landlot 49, District 1, Section 5, Parcels ID 004901 5A001B, and 
00490015A117, application by Thomas Verges. Did I say that right? Okay. And Mr. Gordon is still in here to talk to us about this item as well. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This plat is being brought because it is a uh, medical condominium complex and the owner, he owns one of the suites. It was kind of a three suite um, building and he owns the center section. There was another suite right behind him and all this does is kind of remove the wall between his suite and the one directly behind him. This is an interior only renovation. It does not change the outside of the building, no uh, land changing, no building changes. It's just simply him combining two interior suites that he now owns. Correct. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that to us. Did you guys understand where that is and what's going on with that? Do you all have? Yes, Madam Mayor. I, I understand. Why do they have to come to us if he owns the suites and he's doing, that's like me doing renovations in my house and I have to come to the city? Is If you're not in a historic district or something, what? why does he have to come to us? The tax assessor. County okay. tax assessor needs the paperwork. Mm -hmm. He has deeds on both pieces of property, but they needed a plat right. to show the revised property right. so that the tax oh, assessor. Right. right, like he's, he's part of Yeah, he's an combining, he's, he's already combined. I mean, he owns both tracks, mm -hmm. and now he's bringing forth a new uh, plan, mm -hmm. a new plat that shows them combined so for the tax change. assessor. And that's why I said it'll change the, the, uh, how we are, how he's assessed for taxes and how it is applicable to the city. Correct. So he can get taxes. one parcel as opposed to, to two. two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And yeah, the land absolutely. And this is literally just what's under the building. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's no change to the outside of the structure. Yep. Are you guys good with that? Good. Mm -hmm. So then can we go ahead and place this on the consent agenda? Look at us. Thank you so much, Mr. Gordon. Thank you. And now for our next couple of items. <clears throat> our first is to consider whether to accept the petition of Brian Howell to annex 10.21 acres of land located near Northeast intersection of West Stewart Mill Road and Stewart Mill Road in Landlot 11, District 1, Section 5, Parcel ID 00110150222 in Douglas County, Georgia, into the city limits of the city of Douglasville. And Ms. Shayla Reed is going to talk to us about this item. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Shayla Reed, Community Development Director, 6695 Church Street. Um, so the item before you is a request to submit an annexation and rezoning application. Um, they have not submitted that application yet or those applications as of yet. So we're here just to see if you're interested in receiving that application so it can be submitted. Um, the parcel, as mentioned, is located near Stewart Mill Road. And um, they're requesting to re to annex and rezone, but to have a 90 unit single family detached dwelling with townhomes as well, being zoned PUD. Their current zoning inside of the county is very similar to what they're proposing to have. Their surrounding parcels or neighboring parcels are similar to the use as well. So their staff is not seeing any issues necessarily with what they're requesting. So that concludes my report. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And for um, point of reference, Councilman Miller, I believe this kind of backs up to your ward yes. um, as that's I believe yeah, Arbor at, Station Elementary right. School, we determined. Looks like it's adjacent to St. Julian's is what I right. believe is correct. It's across, yes, it's across the street from that, that um, elementary school. Mm -hmm. the St. Julian's is right on Stewart Mill, and I think that's like the next property over, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Okay. Yes. Madam Mayor? So if, if it's very similar in the county, why, 
why they want to come in the city? Great question. May I defer to the um, Prosso Yes. Owner? You can come to the microphone. Please give us your name and address for the record. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, I'm Brian Howell with HRC Engineers, mm -hmm. address 3321 Campbell Road, Southeast Smyrna, Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, the client wants to move to the city because um, I believe they have a really good relationship with the city and, um, and previous projects that they've worked with them with. And um, really, I think the development standards of the city fits this development and in regards to, you know, it being a, a um, development that, you know, has two different types, townhomes, mm -hmm. single family, um, and also allows for open space for pedestrian pedestrian infrastructure mm -hmm. and creates a community type feel. Um, so that's really why why they're okay. wanting to move to the city. Okay. Okay. I was just wondering because I know we when we have developments that have uh, the component for multi use, which we need. I mean, we need to have um, more availability for people to move in and have other options than just single family. Um, sometimes we get you know concerns about traffic and and all of those. And so in that area, it's not very congested outside of when school is out at Arbor Station or, or church or something at St. Julian. So I was just wondering. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, can you tell us if you guys are planning on having an HOA type community? I believe so. I believe there will be okay. an HOA. Okay, yes. that was, I think, my only other question. Council, did you guys have any questions of the applicant? Yep. Yes, Councilman Miller. Thank you, Councilman Miller. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the specific development, how you, or the number of entrances and exits um, on the property? Councilman and, Miller, I just want to remind you that we're just looking at if we want yeah. to accept the application for you to apply. Okay. I, I look at it kind of like, you know, somebody say, we're going we're gonna to bake you a cake. Would you like the cake? I'd at least like to know what, what's going into the cake before I even make the decision. So. Right, right. Um, so I think the thought right now is that, um, and we're still, you know, working mm -hmm. through this, but Understood. and we're definitely open to what you guys suggest as well. But um, an entrance off of West Stewart Mill, to, which is to the north, because um, this property is located at the corner of West Stewart mm -hmm. Mill and Stewart Mill, and then possibly <clears throat> a right in, right out on Stewart Mill, so two entrances. Okay. Um, it would definitely. I mean, it's a thin enough property. It looks like you've got the, the ability to do that. Right. Okay. Um, thank you, Lillian. Absolutely, thank you. Council, did you have any other questions of the applicant? No? All right, wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. How do you guys feel? Are you guys good with placing this on the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. I love this. All right, Ms. Reed, last one. <laughs> And this is to consider whether to accept the petition of Brian Howell to annex 79.40 acres of land located near the northeast intersection of Doris Road and Cedar Mountain Road and Landlot 228, District 2, Section 5, parcel ID 02280250001. in Douglas County, Georgia, into the city limits of the city of Douglasville. And Ms. Shayla Reed is down here to talk to us about this item as well. Yes, ma'am. So this is very similar to the last request. Um, the property owners are asking to submit an annexation and rezoning application to the city. And um, they're looking to rezone the property to allow for it to be um, R4, which is a single family detached zoning. And so they're looking to have 317 um, single lots for single family detached homes. And um, this again also has similarities of the same zoning. So all four boundaries of this parcel is residential and um, are all primarily in the, in the unincorporated county in with one parcel being in the city. But they're all residential and they're asking for that in their request. And that concludes my reports. And that will be in Ward 2. Correct, okay, thank you so very much. Um, and. I know, I know the applicant's still here. Council, did you guys have questions of the applicant? Yes, okay. Councilman Miller. I will ask the same question. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to restate my name. And... <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Um, so but what was your question again? About the number of entrances. Yeah. So um, 
this property is split by a creek, basically. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking about having two entrances on this one as well, which will be required to as well, um, based on the number of units. But um, there will be an entrance at the north of the creek and entrance on the south side okay. of the creek. So. Thank you. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a peculiar parcel in, in that we can annex it because it's adjacent to a city property, but that city property is detached from the rest of the city. Am I not am I mis misinterpreting uh, yes, the map yes, here? Absolutely. Yes, so that parcel is uh, connected to a, a um, government-owned piece of land, so that kind of is that invisible kind of piece, how roads are invisible to annexation where it doesn't like disconnect. So yes, that is an interesting question because I had to research that myself. So that's, it, yeah. I don't even know how we got that piece uh, into the city to begin with. It was not it's very similar to how War 5 is. It's that connection isn't there because of the um, Sweetwater uh -huh. Park. So that like, kind of reminds you of it not being there and the boundaries are still touching because of that governmental owned property land. So they, do they, they followed like utility right away or something like that? Was that how they, to get to that parcel? I mean, that's. I'm not sure on that question you're asking. Mm -hmm. The, the property, the, the school system owns the yes. North Douglas Athletic right. Complex that's located there that, that right. connects that, I believe. That's correct, Marin. It's kind of like our Alaska in a way. So, okay. That's all right. Okay. Thank you so much. Madam Mayor, you had a question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The applicant come forward again. And it's the same question about, um, and, and you probably have already stated it, because of the relationship that the applicant had with the, the city that was favorable. Um, but I will be looking, it's just an application, but just looking at um, transportation, um, uh, utilities, and traffic lights and all of that in that area. I know it's near Gothers Creek, and it's right on the northern part in Ward 2, Councilman Davis and Council Member Dr. Burdanley's ward. Um, but Gateway Village is in that area as well, um, and there's a lot of renovations done to Highway 92, but just trying to think about traffic. Okay. And I know that the good thing is about more rooftops because we're trying to get a grocer in the area and we need more homes and rooftops. So that's, that would be good. Right. And I know this is not right. all the way deep into the woods um, in, the, in the weeds. I'm just trying to ask. <laughs> so you don't have yes. to answer if, you, if it's the same thing, the relationship. Yes, it's the same thing. And we're <laughs> also going to be getting a traffic study done and everything. So okay. we'll, uh, all right. Hopefully Thank you so much. Yep, so. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. And also, I wanted to ask the same question as on the other item. Um, do you guys plan on having a HOA type community with this one as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Council, did you guys have any more questions? No. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you. Um, well, Council, you guys okay with placing this on the consent agenda? Look at us. Thank you all. Madam Mayor, okay. that is all that we have this evening for planning and development. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. And thank you um, for our Director Reed and Mr. Gordon staff for bringing that information to us. We'll move on then to Public Improvement and Beautification Committee. That's chaired by you as well, Council Member Miller. Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. We do mm -hmm. have one item this evening, and that is to appoint Ms. Cochelle Denigal to the City of Douglasville Historic Preservation Commission for an unexpired term expiring January 31st of 2025. And Ms. Kristen Tate is down here to talk to us about this item. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Kristen Tate, 6695 Church Street. Recently, Councilwoman Miller and staff members interviewed Ms. Cochelle Denegal for the current vacancy on the City of Douglasville Historic Preservation Commission. If appointed, she will fill an unexpired term expiring January 31st, 2025. There are no other individuals interested in this position at this time. Thank you, Ms. Tate. And like Ms. Tate said, we did interview Ms. Cochelle. Um, I believe that was just last week. I personally think that she would be a wonderful addition to the committee, and um, her past experience would provide great resource to the committee as well, and um, I, I think she would make a wonderful addition. Council, any questions? Thoughts on it? No? Well, with that being said, can we place this on the consent, too? Howard's Looks thinking like about it. Is. Oh, Councilman, no. No. 
Oh, okay. oh. We'll I said, can we this. place this on the consent and how? Are you guys okay? <laughs> he's a, he's fine you. with the consent Thank agenda. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> well, Madam Mayor, that is all that we have this evening for public improvement and beautification. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. We appreciate that. And thank you, Ms. Kristen. Uh, we'll move on then to the next committee, which is Pro uh, Public Improvement and Beautification Committee we just had. So Public Relations Committee, chaired by Council Member Samuel Davis. Yes, I have uh, one item this afternoon. And mm -hmm. the item, is, item A is to authorize the mayor to sign a proposed with Greenies LLC for the website redesign and hosted ser mm -hmm. services, Mr. Post. Give us a briefing, please, sir. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Jason Good Post, evening. Community Relations 6695 Church Street. So this is an agreement proposal from Granicus, who is our current website host. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been for the last six years. Um, and we renew this agreement every year. The difference this year is every five to six years, we run up on a year where it's time to do a full website refresh and redesign. And this is year number six. So that's why this is a, a it's kind of a renewal, but it's a new agreement. We're taking advantage of it to move over to a newer uh, platform. Uh, we're gonna be able to consolidate with the CBB site as well and consolidate a lot of our Granicus agreements into one. Um, as part of this redesign, it'll be a redesign of the main city site, the conference center, independent subsite, the amphitheater, we'll get a independent subsite specifically designed for it and a redesign of the branded subsites for parks and PD and then the CVB website which is currently under a redesign will get merged under the same content management system as all of our other sites so we can manage that site in the same way that we do all the other sites at the same time so it's kind of a cleanup and a consolidation of all of our different Granicus agreements so um, but I would be happy to answer any questions you may have about Granicus so or the agreement. So, Mr. Post, so there's uh, each one of the uh, sites got a different price, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I was going to ask. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. As is listed out there, the, the main redesign cost is for the, the city site. Our, our main city site is six to seven hundred pages. It's a, it's a pretty large site. Um, when we redesign it, that becomes the main wireframe for what the site looks like. What we have under that is two independent subsites, one for the conference center and one for the amphitheater. That gives us the ability to make sites that are kind of unique looking for them to meet their unique needs. So there's going to be a unique need and a purpose for the amphitheater site and for the conference center site to sell those spaces in the way that they are. Um, so they'll be a little bit unique as far as the design and the functionality and the features that they can have. Um, we have branded subsites for the PD and the Parks Department, so they look, they're going to look similar feature and layout-wise to the main city site, but they'll have kind of their independent homepage and the independent look, the way, same way they do now on the current city site. Uh, the Parks and the PD have a, a slightly different look and feel on their homepages. So your team will be leading this charge, right? Yes, sir. Good. Uh, currently, Chris Dixon, our webmaster, manages all of the city's web pages. Webmaster, um, I like he's, that. He's, he stays very busy keeping up with, with everything. So um, He's been in this platform for the last six years, and it's been very comfortable for him. Their support has been great whenever there's an issue. Uh, he reaches out on a regular basis, and they have answers. They're a big enough com company that usually if there's an issue with the platform, by the time we reach out, they're already aware of it and have fixed it. So okay, we had good. one of those yesterday. Uh, our forms weren't loading for some reason on Xfinity Wi-Fi. Uh, we called them and they said, yep, we've already got figured out and we've got it fixed and it, it was already working again. So occasionally that happens. Uh, very rarely do we have major issues. I think in the past six years we haven't really had any major outages of the website um, or anything like that. There's occasionally little glitches, but by the time we reach out, they're already fixed. So the, this is one of the larger government uh, web providers in the country. So there's a couple of them out there that are the big uh, players, but they're one of the larger companies out there that provide the service. They specialize in government, so they understand the security needs, uh, the transparency, the ADA compliancy, and the things like that that we need to have available as a government body on our website. Um, so they're very good at providing that and helping us to make sure that we're 
crossing all the I's and dotting all the T's and the things that we need okay, to for security okay. and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, thank you, yeah. Jason. May, Madam Mayor. I do have a question, Councilman Davis. <laughs> Mr. Thank, thank you, Director Post. I, um, oh. Just looking at, well, it's 57 pages to this, uh, <laughs> to this item, but um, on pages two and, and uh, two through five or so, so you have open city subsite license or five and then open city license. So there, you know what those mean, the Granicus Web Inner Interest Specialty Branded Subsite. So you all will put, you know which each department needs the website, so. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you will brand or you will have those different departments associated with these specialty sites that are open. Yes, ma'am. Um, so mm -hmm. can, is there an addendum in these pages I didn't see where, uh, for example, for public works departments, Mr. Roberts, when we have the um, recycling center and giving out information, um, is there room to, was that be an additional cost or could they connect on to something else? Absolutely. So uh, this is basically a web design platform as well. So they, they're going to help us build out the main website the same mm -hmm. way they always done. Um, but it's going to function the same way our, our, our content management system does now. We can build as many pages as we want. Oh, okay. Um, okay. They, so we can, from this new platform, mm -hmm. we can build as many featured pages okay. as we want to, as we mm -hmm. add on stuff, as we add on departments and divisions and, and things like that. Um, another bit, another kind of key part to, to what this new platform offers is they've got a, it's an engagement HD platform. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we have these specialty projects, when we have something uh, big like the recycling center that we want to get messaging out, or if we want to get com community feedback, mm -hmm. um, they have a, a platform that's built into this new Open City site um, that is dedicated to that community engagement part. So all of these plans and studies and things like that that we're doing they have uh, platforms where we can build out project pages and get community feedback directly on the site. Mm -hmm. um, so some of those things like the recycling center or any of these plans mm -hmm. that we've talked about with the downtown master plan and the urban redevelopment plan and all these right. that we've got going on, that we'll be able to build new destination pages into the site for all those plans to, okay. to make easier community engagement for those, those type of things. But yes, we can build as many pages as we want off of this one. This one gets us going, mm -hmm. and then we have the ability to make as many pages as we want. So this okay. means Freddie will get a site too? Pardon? This means Freddie Fred, will get a site too? Freddie has a page already. Oh, he does already? Yeah, so awesome. we'll, we'll be able to expand it if we want to. Okay. Yeah, we'll make him our mascot. Thank you, <laughs> uh, no, that, that's true. Well, thank you, Councilman Davis. Anyone else? Okay, if not, ma'am, may I like to put this on the consent of Jennifer uh, for Monday, please? I don't see any opposition. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. That's all thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Post. That's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman Davis, and thank you, Director Post. We'll move on to Public Safety Committee. The Vice Chair is Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. <clears throat> we have uh, one item tonight. Uh, consider a request for the alcoholic beverage licenses for the on-premise sale and consumption of wine and malt beverages and spiritus liquor at the following establishment. Proposed licensee, BL Lucky Phoenix Corporation, DBA, uh, Sapporo Japanese uh, Hibachi Sushi and Steakhouse, location 9610 Highway 5, proposed agent outlet manager, Green Ling. The required fees have been paid into the finance department. And is Mr. Ling here? Ms. Ling, oh, I'm sorry. But when you get up here, correct me, I know I mispronounced your name, and give us your name and address for the record. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is King Ning. Probably need to update my last name. It's L-I-N. Yeah. And uh, we applied for a legal license for the, the restaurant business for B. L. Lucky Phoenix Corporation, DBA, Sapporo Japanese Sushi and Stay House, located in 9610 Highway 5, Douglasville, Georgia. Okay. Um, and uh, how long have y'all been open? Just oh, we opened since March 6th on Wednesday. Six months? No, no March 6th. March 6th. Six. They just March. opened. Oh, they March just opened. Just opened okay. like probably two okay. weeks from now. Yes. So why don't you uh, tell us how you go about training your employees as far as checking ID and things like that? Um, yes, uh, we have our uh, serving alcohol house policy. 
So from Doug's view, I do a research. First, I will make myself to be in the s serving alcohol permit with, along with other servers, mm -hmm. front staff, and the manager, and the bartenders. And then we will request order employee in the front before serving the alcohol must be check customer's ID. Um, whoever look under 40 years old, ask for the car name, check the ID, make sure we're not serving the minors. Yes. And also, we gotta observe the things, we have multiple things like detail, like not always serving the customer, we probably let customer order drink one at a time. And, you know, uh, even go, even provide the, all the customers who have ordered the alcohol drink, we provide the, go away with the water, with the by hand refueling frequently as needed. And then we definitely have the good taste of the sushi and the hibachi to help <laughs> them and the absorb the alcohol slowly, then enjoy the moment. Okay. Right. And we, our food design, the seafood, sushi, and hibachi, mm -hmm. we get, go wrong with the alcohol, be good taste the moment, but we more focus on uh, dining to serving the food and the quality, food and texture. The alcohol will just like go wrong with that, but not the main things. We all just can provide things we have. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, any any questions or comments? I know uh, Monday we'll have a uh, public hearing on this item, correct? That's how we're doing it now? Yes, sir, and we will get her last name um, corrected. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. and, so, uh, any yes, Madam Mayor. I just had a comment. Congratulations on your opening. Uh, my daughter and her college roommates went there for dinner. I think last Saturday or one of those days. But she brought some food home, and it was very good. So, Thank congratulations. Thanks. Y'all are located right there next to the U-Haul rental place. Is that is that y'all's place? They're down in that. Sea oh, the old Seabreeze. Sea oh, that's yeah, okay. Old Seabreeze, yes. Okay. But it's totally right. sea different. On Highway Five. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, no. Well, glad to have you in Ward One. That's all. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Well, uh, we will take take this up on Monday. We'll have a public hearing, and uh, we'll take a vote on Monday. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Thank Lincoln. you, Madam Mayor. That's all I had tonight. Thank you so much, Coach. We appreciate you uh, bringing that item forward for. Um, as the vice chair for council member Burdanley. So we'll move on then to recreation, culture, and tourism. You are the chair of that committee as well. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have one item tonight uh, uh -huh. to appoint Lawrence Knight to the post two position of the city of Douglasville Parks and Recreation Advisory Board for a three year term expiring February 15th, 2027. And Ms. Tate will handle this. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Kristen Tate, 6695 Church Street. Councilman Watson staff members recently interviewed Mr. Lawrence Knight for the post two vacancy on the City of Douglasville Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. If appointed, he will fill a three year term expiring February 15th, 2027. There are no other individuals interested in this position at this time. Thank you, Ms. Tate. Yes, uh, he's a frequent user. He and his uh, grand, I think grandson has, uh, Anyway, his family, he's a frequent user of all of our parks, uh, very interested in the development of our parks, likes what he has seen. Uh, big time golfer, uh, and he golfs all the time at our uh, West Pines. Okay, so uh, anyway, he was, he was great in the interview. Any, any questions for Ms. Tate? He, he is a Penn State grad. I don't know about the thing. Penn State? That. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, Tell Pittsburgh, come yeah. on. <laughs> we I, folks I, have a look askance sometimes at the Penn State lines. folks. They do okay to Dittany Lines. All right. I'm sure he'll be fine. All right. Um, well, thank you, Ms. Tate. And we're going to place this on the consent agenda for Monday. And that's all I had under Parks, uh, parks recre Recreation, Culture, and Tourism. Thank you so much, Coach. We appreciate that. And Ms. Tate, thank you for bringing that information forward to us. We'll move on then to item 15, which is Technology Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Elena Hudson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business under the Technology Committee this evening. Thank you, ma'am. Transportation Committee, um, Vice Chair, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, would you please take that committee for me? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we have no business under the Transportation Committee at this time. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, do we have any other business from council members, uh, from the elected officials, for the good of the meeting or the public? Okay. 
not seeing any, I will bring a couple of um, items forward. I'd like to thank the staff and uh, the elected officials that attended. Thank the staff for putting together the State of the City. Um, it was a great um, event, it was well attended, and I really, I was nervous, but I had a really nice time, and I really appreciate seeing you all in the audience. You made it much better to see your friendly faces, so thank you for taking time to come to the State of the City. And you already heard it, so you know you were like, I already heard this information, but thank you so much for, again for coming out. It was wonderful. Um, and the downtown master plan, um, I was gonna say something about that, but I can't remember. So anyway, I'd let that, I know. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. The downtown master plan is happening. There you go. So if people wanna attend that, it's, it's here at the conference center. And then the last thing was um, the city manager and I, um, I received a telephone call from Senator Tim Beard and he was a former Douglasville police officer, but he, he was in the house and now he's in the Senate, Mike Dugan's position. And he called about um, a, sent a bill that was went through the House, but it got kicked back. It was House Bill 516, and it will prohibit city police officers and departments from using radar for speed detection on interstates. So it will prohibit them from doing, uh, you know, speedometers. You can't write any tickets, and so you have to have um, five consecutive miles, continuous interstate miles, and if you don't at least have five miles, then you can't, the municipal governments, police uh, officers can't write tickets. Now that hasn't passed yet, right? Well, it says that um, after spirited debate, the amendment passed the Senate by a vote of 25 to 24, an underlining bill has now moved back to the House. So City Manager, I don't know if you've heard anything else on this. I know GMA is taking up this matter, and at that meeting that I was at yesterday <laughs> with the five mayors, um, they were really concerned. I think there's only one city in the state that has five miles on the interstate. Other than that, none of us uh, can, our police officers can, not, it's not so much about the speeding, but accidents and all of that. We can't, it'll just be the state troopers. They just reduced law enforcement on our interstates. Yeah, so basically. city manager, if you heard anything else? Um, GMA was working to clean up the language, um, I, and that was on Tuesday. I haven't checked it as of today. Um, Major, I don't know if you all have heard anything, but I can send an uh, email to you, but a lot of cities were calling. Yes, sir. We heard the same that you're discussing right now. The chief's aware of it. They're looking for some comments, I think, from GACP, Georgia Association of Chiefs of Police, mm -hmm. to, to weigh in on this. I, I would expect there to be some pretty spirited pushback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Senator Bearden was very concerned. He called late on Friday and uh, talked to me about it and asked me to call GMA and so we're you know looking to that political arm to help us with negotiations with the, our uh, de uh, delegation and the other thing that is happening is the data centers um, I have a call from Wall Street Journal to talk to them about Douglasville being a data hub but the concern is, um, and I think that passed in the House, I don't know if you know if the governor, the governor has not vetoed it, but to kind of prohibit data centers because of the strain on utilities for water and Georgia Power, Greystone Power, so to limit data centers in the state. So I don't, city manager, if you had anything. No, ma'am, um, I'm pretty certain that one will be signed by the governor. GMA has a listening session for Region 3 just on legislative priorities in the next couple of weeks. Um, if anybody's interested in going to that, I will be going. Um, let me know, and I will have uh, Ms. Kristen register you for that. It's no cost. Um, it usually starts around 10 a.m., and it'll give you the update on what has happened in the last 40 days. Yeah, the and final. so... And it was very, DC Block will not be affected. I think there is, once the data centers are in the pipeline, they're gonna be grandfathered in, and then they'll have a two-year committee or something to look at all of the data centers around the state. I, I don't know, I think they're just trying to stop data centers. I don't know. I'd love to see their data on, on how to justify Yeah, so. I know. So anyway, those are the couple of things I want to bring to the council's attention, and I would like to attend with you as well, city manager, to help us keep our city moving forward. All righty. So that is all that we have for under other business. I'll move on then to updates from city staff. Our city attorney, Mr. Joel Dotson. No business, Madam Mayor. 
Thank you, Attorney Dotson. Our staff attorney, Ms. Miranda Jordan. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. Um, I know we received some lawsuits last week. They were pretty aggressive, and Ms. Jordan has taken care of all of that for us, and I guess you'll give us an update when you have one about that, um, that issue. But that's normally not how it's done. They don't usually come to your house at e in the evening times. So we'll move on. The police department, Major? We have nothing, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Major Stafford. Um, our city manager, Ms. Marsha Hampton. Only to remind you that City Hall is closed tomorrow in observance of Good Friday, and we will see you on Monday, and it's not an April Fool's. Thank you. Thank you so much, City Manager. Comments from citizens and delegates, if you sustain the meeting and you'd like to speak to us about any business that's remain to the city of Douglasville, please come forward, give us your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes to talk to us. You don't have anything? Pastor, you stayed the whole time. Okay. Well, if we don't have any other business, then this meeting is adjourned.